Hello, students. Professor Benavides here. Let's talk about Chapter 7, User Input and While Loops. Specifically, I want to go ahead and drill down on the second part of this chapter entitled Introducing While Loops. Okay, so the chapter first off starts off talking about the while, about while loops and the question is posed. What is the difference between a for loop and a while loop? Sounds like a joke, right? Uh, so the for loop takes a collection of items and executes a block of code once for every item in the collection. In contrast, the while loop runs as long or while a certain condition is true. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in our first example of a while loop right here on the screen. And we see right here, let's just go over what it says here uh, on the first one on here. We're going to go ahead and assign one to a variable called current number. And then we're going to start the loop on line five. And we're going to iterate as long as the condition current underscore number is less than or equal to five. So we will continue to loop as long as this is true. And in the loop, we will print that number and then we will increment the number with this short abbreviated version of, um, you know, there's a longer way of, of doing that. And I'll, 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 uh, I'll go ahead and cover that with you in just a second. Um, so let's go ahead and, and, and run this. Uh, and, and see what we get. Control B, right? So here it is. So it prints out. So the first time it comes in here, you've got one. So is one less than or equal to five? Yes, so it prints one. And then it comes, it increments one by one. So that gives me a two. And it'll continue to do that until it reaches five. And then I'm just gonna go over the one, second one to the last. Is five less than or equal to five? Yes, so it prints five. It increments again, so current number is six. It comes up to the top on line five and it says, is six less than or equal to five? And what happens then? It drops out of the loop, right? Drops out of the loop. So let me go ahead and cover with you the old way in which we used to do it, not technically the old way, uh, but the longhand way of doing line seven. So the longhand way of doing line seven is to say current value, or number, right, um, is equal to current number plus one. And let's go ahead and run that to verify that it does work the same. And yes, indeed it does. So it's your choice um, as to uh, which one of these styles you would like to go ahead and use. I think most advanced programmers, or at least programmers that uh, exit the uh, introduction the programming class will typically write it in style seven, but style, uh, the style that's on line A, the long way is just as valid and gets you to the same place. Okay, so our, our next example on here is um, letting the user choose when to quit. Okay, so what we got here is we've got a situation where we're gonna go ahead and prompt the user using the input function. And so we, in this particular case, we create our prompt and store that in a variable called prompt. And then we feed prompt to input, okay? And then the result from input goes in the message. So the first time we come into this, we set message to the empty string and we perform a test on line eight. And we say while message is not equal to quit. So let's go ahead and run this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run this inside of Sublime and I'm gonna go ahead and run it at the command line. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and type in CMD. And from here, I put everything in a folder. If I remember, I think I put it in part two. Who, what did I put it in? Let me do a directory listing, right? Should have done it somewhere else, but this could be instructive to you to find the, uh, the directories that you have. Uh, on here. Where did I put that? Oh, I put it on the desktop. Yes, yeah, so it's on the desktop. And inside of the desktop, now I remember it's in the folder called part two. All right. 
So if you could, if I just want to see, there, there are my, my files, my uh, Python files. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, use it that way. All right. I think it'll be a little bit cleaner uh, because remember uh, we we said that that uh, Sublime does not you know handle user input. So you know you're probably going to want to go and um, uh, use uh, something like uh, Visual Studio Code or something um, you know to that effect, right? All right, so uh, let me go ahead and bring in the CMD again. I think I got it off the screen. And then I'm gonna put it into the right place. I was just getting rid of the output window from Sublime. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, you know, CD uh, desktop. And then I'm gonna go into that folder. That I told you now, what I'm gonna do, if I wanna run this file, it's called parrot one. I'm gonna say Python, parrot one. Uh, py right so it says tell me something and i will repeat it back to you okay so i guess that's enough so i'll just say quit so that worked out pretty good you know uh you know of course it, it does have its its limitations you know uh you know the limitation is that it repeats the word you know um well it repeats the word quit uh to the screen which you know, some people you know think it's kind of distracting. And we'll of course fix that in the next example here. Uh, but for right now, let's just talk about how this program works. So the first time we go through the loop, uh, message is just an empty string. Okay, so line six message is just an empty string. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and then go into the loop and we're gonna test to see if message is not equal to quit, right? So on line nine, we're introduced to the input statement, the input function, right? And um, we, uh, when we issue this, it, it, in this particular case on line nine, it's gonna get what the string called prompt and it's gonna prompt the user. The response is then gonna be placed in a variable called message. So then we print the message and then, you know, I said, hey, it's for horses, right? Then it looped back up here again and uh, it will loop as long as message is not equal to quit. And then I, I pose the question again, tell me something. This, case, this time I typed in quit. So when it looped back up here, the condition is tested. Is quit not equal to quit? And in that particular case, um, you know, it fails and we drop out of the loop, okay? We're going to go ahead and fix that problem of printing the word quit in this next example that I've got here. All right, so let's just go ahead and use the command line again. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and press the up arrow key. And instead of running uh, parrot one, I'm going to go ahead and run parrot two. All right. So in this particular case, tell me something and I will repeat it back to you. I'll just say, hey. Same thing. No, I'll say, hey. Good looking. You can spell it right, right? And then I'll just say quit. Notice how this time it did not repeat quit back to me. Why? That's because I embedded or nested an if statement inside of this repetition construct. So um, a simple if fixed the problem. So it says if message is not equal to quit then we will print the message, else what? Else nothing happens, right? Okay, so basically what happens is, um, you know, um, as the loop will stop because it's got quit in there, but it will not print the message if it's if it's equal to quit, okay? Uh, let's, let's bring it up another notch and talk about, um, in this particular case, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go ahead and use a flag, and a flag is useful um, not when you have one situation, but when you have many events that need to be tested for. And the author talks about a game, and you build that game and the uh, projects at the end of the book. But for right now, we're just gonna go ahead and be introduced to something called a flag, and it's a Boolean condition, right? So we see there on line six, 
that um, active is being set to true. Of course, we could have called this anything, but active is a pretty good, uh, you know, pretty good name for that uh, Boolean variable. So we're setting the flag on line six, and then we say while active. So it's already set to true, and we go ahead and 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 and, and uh, prompt and put the response in message. And if the message is equal to quit, then active is false. Else it prints the message. Beautiful, beautiful work of art on the logic on here. So let's go ahead and uh, run this. And I'm gonna uh, press the up arrow key and instead of running pair two, I'll run pair three. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and say just, hey, right? You know, to, and it's, um, you know, repeating it again. I'll just say hello. So it keeps repeating it. And then when I say quit, it quits. Okay. So that's, uh, that's using a flag. So um, and again, flags are used when you have to test for many conditions. It makes more sense when you're like, for example, in a game and you have to test for many conditions uh, that, um, uh, could possibly cause the game to to exit, right? So it's typically used in more complicated uh, programs. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and go over the next one on here. We're going to talk about uh, using break to exit. In this particular case, we um, you know we have a, a loop on line four. And that uh, we go ahead and perform our prompt. And uh, if city is equal to quit, we will break, right? Otherwise, we'll say, I'd love to go to that particular city. So let me go ahead and run that. It's called cities, right? OK, so um, city, um, believe it or not, I am from Laredo, right? And then another city, I was born in Alice, right? And I grew up in Bene Benavides, believe it or not, right? And quit. So that's, uh, so basically what's happening here, if city is equal to quit, then it breaks um, to exit, right? So to exit while the, the loop immediately without running any uh, remaining code, in the loop, regardless of the results of any conditional test, use the break statement. Some people don't like the break statement to say it's a it's a bit too abrupt and it doesn't, uh, you know, conform to their ideas of well, one way in and one way out kind of ideas. But it works, right? Same one on here. This would be uh, using continue, and this is uh, this is a kind of interesting situation. I don't see an in, I don't see an input statement here, so I can just run this inside of um, Sublime. So what happens here is I set current number to zero. And then I have a loop here on line five and it will increment as long as current number is less than 10. So I increment the number and then I perform a test. And this test says current number modulus two equals zero. And in this case, we will continue. That means you will return to the beginning of the loop. Uh, and then we will print that current number. Okay, so um, as you remember, modulus is the remainder. Uh, so if you can't do math in your head, you can just come over here and say, you know, what is one divided by two? And there's a little bit of a remainder on there, right? Uh, you know, so um, we're looking for a condition to be true that the current number modulus two is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, the first one got printed so two divided by two, you know, uh, we don't have a remainder, okay? It was div div divided by one. So in that particular case, you know, in that particular case, it conti the continue statement fires. The continue statement in this particular case says go back up to the top and don't print that number. That's why two was not printed. Then it loops and three goes into here and it, um, you know, it doesn't satisfy the condition. So then it drops down to print. 
you know, notice because there's a there's an indentation here, so this print is not part of that if. It's the next, uh, you know, the next statement on here, right? Uh, okay, so there, uh, there we go. That's that is continue. Let's go on to our next one here, which is probably my favorite, which is a, vo a, a, a demo in this section is avoiding avoiding the infinite loop um, on here and. The author tells you and I uh, that if you do this inside of Sublime, it, it's going to continue with the infinite loop, and you're not going to be able to get out of it with the uh, Control C. He said to try clicking outside the window and all, but nothing worked for me. Yeah, I ended up having to exit the editor, like he said. So um, I'm not going to go ahead and run it in Sublime. I'm just going to go ahead and run it in here. So we'll say, you know, Python. What's the name of this program? Uh, it's called Counting Three. And when I press it, and when I run it, I get an infinite loop. So what I can do now is hold on the control key and press the letter C, and that interrupts or cancels the situation here. It's a keyboard interrupt. Um, how and why did this happen? This happened because we forgot the incrementer right here. This line was the one that was forgotten. So um, just a little word to, to, to the wise here. Let's say that I, I, I edit this sublime thingy and I come back over here and I run the program again. Why, um, you know, um, I would think that line nine would, would, would not have this happen, right? Well, you gotta save the file first, right? You gotta save the file. So let me go ahead and, and um, come back over here and do a control S and then come over here. And I'm still in the, I'm still in the thingy, so I'm gonna have to do a control C to stop that. Let me see if I can get out of that or control C. There we go. So then we can go ahead and run that again. And it runs as it's supposed to. Why does it run as it's supposed to? Is because this infinite loop happened because I forgot this line of code right here, the incrementer. Which the long way to write that would be x gets x plus one. This is the uh, the shorthand abbreviated operator for incrementing. Okay. So hopefully that was instructive. Let's go ahead and and talk about the the try it yourself. And I'm going to go ahead and use, just to, for the sake of uh, doing something different, let's uh, look at um, those programs inside of Visual Studio. And in this particular one, pizza toppings, write a loop that prompts a user to enter in a series of pizza toppings until they enter a quit, val a quick quit value. As they enter each topping, print a message saying that you'll add the topping to the pizza. Now, I, I, when I wrote this, I put in on line seven, the old way we used to do this with concatenation, with using the concatenation operator. And I'm contrasting that with the formatted string in which we, we use the uh, placeholders. Uh, either one of those would work, um, you know. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this program. Um, let me see. Let's go ahead and uh, run it. So it says, what topping would you like on your pizza? And then quit. That's all I want, anchovies, right? All right, so uh, what happened here, uh, we will repeat on truth and we will prompt and we say, you know, what do you want on your pizza? And if the topping is not equal to quit, then we'll print. If, when we type in uh, quit, uh, then it goes into the else clause and it breaks. Okay. Or in other words, if it is equal to quit, then this if does not fire, of which then the else clause fires. Right. Let's look at our next example. It'll be our last out of this section here. And I have a prompt at the top, and I have um, a loop. And the loop um, will iterate on truth. And I go ahead and prompt 
for age, and then I do a test. Uh, if age is equal to quit, then I'll break. Um, so uh, otherwise, I will go ahead and um, get the age and convert it to an int. And then I will perform a test on here. So let me just go ahead and run this and see how it goes here. I got rid of the, the old stuff and let me just run it uh, uh, again. So uh, how old are you? I'm gonna go ahead and put in a two. So, and then quit. Uh, let's see now here, that, that didn't have, maybe we're not seeing the whole thing on here. Uh, I wanted to show you that, scratch all that, that's because I had my mind set on, I wanted to go ahead and show you how to do this using the breakpoint, yeah. Um, so let me go ahead and set a breakpoint right here and let's just do a step into it to see the logic on this. And that's what I was thinking of in my head. So to set a breakpoint, I'm gonna set it right there and we're just gonna walk through the whole thing on here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to run, start debugging and choose the Python file. And then I'm gonna use these little things um, here. I, I could be pressing F11, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and then just click on the um, icon here. So as you can see here, we uh, enter the loop and we're gonna go ahead and prompt for age. Okay, remember the line that's highlighted means the line that's gonna get executed but has not executed yet. So as soon as I go ahead and click on step into, it goes and gives me the prompt. So how old are you? I'm gonna go ahead and type in a two, like a two year old would be doing this, right? Uh, so then I press enter. So now the next line that's gonna execute is gonna test to see if age is equal to quit. We already know that age is equal to two. And if you forget, you can always just go ahead and um, point. Now, Two, and th at this particular point in time, two is a string, right? It hasn't been uh, converted to an int yet, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and press the step into. And in this case, it's, it has still, it's still a string, right? So we're gonna uh, step into and then point over here and see what we got. We got the number two. So age, is now an integer. And now we're ready to go ahead and go through our tests here. In this case, it caught. Two is less than three, and, and it's gonna go ahead and print, you get in free. And um, it loops back up uh, again, right? So in this particular case, um, it's saying, um, how old are you? Let's go ahead and say, say 50. Oh no, I have to I have to press the step into. I'm getting mixed up. Sorry. Step into. And now I put in 50. And then uh, we're going to continue to, to, to test on here. And we're going to convert that 50 to an int. And the first test does not catch. The second test does not catch. We go into the else and we it should print your ticket is $15. Okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and prompt again. See where we're at the top on line five. And we're gonna say, we're good. this time we're just gonna quit, right? I mean, we could do this again to test, um, to test to see if the, if the uh, middle LF is, is working properly. But in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and type in quit. And in that particular case, um, you know, uh, we're, um, you know, you know, pretty much, uh, well, we're not finished yet. All right, I thought we'd finish. Just go step into where we have to perform a test for the quit, right? Let's go all the way on this. The test was successful and now the break statement will execute. Finally, yes, we are truly exited uh, you know, from the program. Okay, well, that's the way I wanted to end this uh, particular section on, you know, we talked about you know, using the while loop. And um, I also threw in using debugger and uh, setting up a little uh, breakpoint. And I just did the, the plain old step into and went line by line by line to see the logic. So the break, the uh, setting a breakpoint and, and doing the, um, the step into is an excellent way of understanding the logic of re repetition constructs as well as selection constructs.
because when you you just have to be patient uh, you know with it and uh, uh, read the screen and understand uh, you know where you are um, in the program you know but but other than that that is um, my rendition of um, introducing the while loops thank you see you in the next recording <laughs>